In this video, we're taking a look at Major Hurricane Larry and its possible effects on Bermuda and the east coast of the U.S. Also, severe storms are returning to the Great Lakes and Ohio Valley as a massive cold front is about to push through. Then, we have to keep a very close eye on the Gulf of Mexico as the potential for a new tropical storm developing is still there. Welcome back, y'all. Ryan Hall here with the weather forecast. Like always, in today's video, I'm going to provide a quick, clear, and precise analysis on the weather and its impacts on the U.S. We always go in depth on this channel, but I know that there are some weather nerds out there who are hungry for more. You want to get down into the nitty gritty of the science behind these hurricanes and severe storm setups? Well, I'm doing a super in depth live stream tonight for members only at around 6 p.m. Eastern. We're going to hang out and nerd out about the weather for an hour or so, and I'll be able to answer any questions you may have. So if you're not a member of the channel yet, consider becoming one now so you don't miss out. Not only do you get all the perks and stuff, but it's the best way to support the channel as well. Oh, by the way, no notifications don't work on members only live streams so you'll have to set a reminder for yourself I'll have the link in the description to the live stream uh, so you can set a reminder there okay now without further ado let's start talking about the weather all right here's a big old look at the United States of America and what we're looking at here is the way the radar looks right now and what it could look like as we go into the future I just wanted to give you a good snapshot here of what we're talking about okay we got showers and thunderstorms that are going to be making their way through the Northeast later on today but look at this this second big wave that comes in look this big cold front coming through and dropping a big old line of storms through the Great Lakes and Ohio Valley regions. This is going to bring some severe weather over here and we're going to talk about that more in depth here in a second. Additionally, we're watching the Gulf of Mexico here very closely, like with a magnifying glass almost, uh, because there's so much activity down here, anything could actually start spinning up and become our next tropical system, possibly Tropical Storm Mindy. And once again, on the weather models here in a minute, we're going to take a much closer look at that. Now, our simulated radar doesn't make it all the way out here into the middle of the ocean, but there's a big old hurricane out there right now, Hurricane Larry, and I think it's time we take a look at what's up with him. All right, here's the latest look at the uh, infrared satellite here on uh, Hurricane Larry. As you can see, this thing's still spinning like crazy out here. Uh, we've still got a lot of uh, big convective towers going up, but, but they're not really getting as high as they were before. And also, if you see that eye there, uh, it doesn't look nearly as well defined as it was before, okay? You can really see uh, that as this thing has taken more of a northward shift, it's getting into some wind shear that's kind of tearing it apart, okay? This thing hasn't reached a Category 4 yet. And in fact, my confidence that this thing will eventually reach a Category 4 is, you know, definitely dwindling as it looks like the wind shear is going to get the best of Larry out here, okay? So, uh, you know, the good news is, is that this is weakening. We don't want to see a big bad storm, not even for the fish out there. But also, there's some other impacts from Larry uh, on the east coast of the U.S. and also, of course, in Bermuda that we definitely don't want to see uh, the worst of, okay? So the more this weakens, the better. All right, this is what Larry looks like, uh, the projected path here. Uh, right now, Larry's got 120 mile an hour winds. Okay, it's moving northwest at 12 miles an hour. And it's expected to maintain that 120 mile an hour wind speed all the way down to 115, all the way until it get, just about gets to Bermuda. And then we do expect it to go down to a category two, category one, it might remain a category one all the way up here. Uh, as it continues to go up to the north and east. So the good news is, is that this has shifted uh, quite a bit east uh, from you know some of the westward trends that we initially saw. Uh, so Bermuda, it does look like you will not take a direct impact from this. However, you're still gonna get some of those outer bands and you're still gonna get a lot of that surf and a lot of those big waves coming through. Uh, so make sure you're ready for that. As this thing comes up here, it's gonna be throwing water this way. And we expect big waves and deadly surf all the way across the entire eastern portion of the US. As we go into the next couple of days all the way through the end of the week, uh, you're going to be seeing some big waves, some deadly swells here from South Carolina into North Carolina, all the way up into Virginia and those mid-Atlantic and, and New England beaches up here. I really do think that this is going to be a pretty dangerous situation for anybody who tries to get out in the water. Now, I know that there's some surfers who are happy about this, but and I know that you guys, for the most part, know what you're doing, but make sure you take this seriously, okay? This is a big storm out here, throwing a lot of water. There's going to be some deadly rip currents and uh, some big waves out there, so just make sure you're prepared. But for the most part, that's the biggest impact that we're going to feel over here on the East Coast from Larry. All right, now let's go over here to the NAM 3 kilometer model and really take a look at that severe weather possibility that we have up here in the Great Lakes region. Now, the Storm Prediction Center has issued a slight risk of severe weather for tomorrow, and this includes a 2% chance of tornadoes, a 5% chance of severe damaging hail, and also a 15% chance of damaging winds. So obviously, we're not talking about a widespread, you know, severe weather event here that's going to cause tons of damage, but it could actually 
really impact you directly. So I want to make sure uh, that I talk about it here. Uh, we're going to put this into motion. If you want to keep up with the date and time, it's always going to be displayed above my head. We're going to go through today. By the way, there's going to be some showers and thunderstorms out here in uh, New England and in the Northeast, uh, but these are really nothing to worry about. Okay. That's associated with uh, one storm system that's coming through. That's pretty much paving the way for this next one. Okay. You see this big line of storms right here. That's associated with a cold front and a nasty cold front at that. Uh, that's going to be driving in some much cooler air down here. And on the front leading edge of that, it has to rake the warm air out of the way. And that's how we're going to get these big storms here. Look at here. 4 a.m. on Tuesday morning, we have a line of severe thunderstorms into the northern Wisconsin area, north of Rice Lake and into the upper peninsula area of uh, Michigan. And then by uh, 12 p.m. on Tuesday, this is when we think some of the severe weather could really start to come together. OK, we're going to have the heating of the day. We're going to have this massive cold front. We're going to have some pretty good convective values out here. And I think that we might see a pretty good squall line of storms form up uh, between, you know, noon and 4 p.m. and really cause a mess out here in central portions of Michigan. Uh, it's these kind of storms that are, you know, often overlooked. OK, this is being propelled southward from a really strong low pressure system. It's going to be bringing in really cold air behind it uh, and it's moving fast. OK, you put those things together and you probably get a pretty good uh, damaging wind threat there uh, through much of central Michigan. Uh, this thing's going to continue to grow. OK, this cold front's got a lot of work to do here. And uh, right there on that boundary, you're going to see that work happening in the form of thunderstorms, possibly in the Chicago region by uh, 6 p.m. And then maybe all the way down here into the western areas of uh, Illinois. Now, remember, the strongest storms are going to be up here in Michigan, but you guys also need to watch out for some isolated hail and maybe uh, some damaging winds here and there. Look at here. We're getting into Indiana as well with those strong storms. And of course, uh, even though this is a cold front driven storm system, as the sun goes down, we lose a lot of those convective uh, available potential energy values, and we are also going to lose the storms. So uh, as nightfall comes, the storms are going to die off, and it doesn't really look like they're going to reform the next day. However, it is possible we see some isolated severe storms anywhere from central New York into Pennsylvania, right here across the Appalachian Mountains into eastern Kentucky. All right, now let's zoom out to the whole United States and do our weekly forecast. We usually do this on Monday. By the way, even if there's nothing ever going on with the weather on this channel, uh, we all always do a, a video on Monday talking about the general forecast. And that's what we're going to do now with the GFS model. Okay. Remember date and time is always going to be up here and we're going to go ahead and skip forward a little bit until we get our big storm system coming through. That's what I want to talk about first Tuesday night into the early morning hours on Wednesday. We're going to have that big low pressure system coming through dragging along a cold front with some storms. And some of those storms could actually be as far south as into Oklahoma, by the way, but those are not going to be severe. Okay. The severe thunderstorms are going to remain up here in the Northeastern quad of this cold front. You see these red lines that are bulging like this. That tells me that there's some pretty significant cold air behind here. We're probably going to see lows down in the 30s in Minnesota on Wednesday and Thursday. So that's pretty significant for this time of year. We were just dealing with record heat <laughs> through a lot of the central portion of the United States. And now we're going to be talking about uh, some really uh, cold weather coming in uh, for early September. It just shows you the power of the cold front there as it moves through. It's going to bring some rain into the northeastern areas uh, late in the day on Wednesday. And once again, uh, anywhere north of that line there is going to be pretty chilly as we go into Thursday morning. Now, on the contrary, you see the, the lines go up like this on the West Coast, and that tells me that it's going to be quite warm out here. So get ready for those high temperatures burning you up out here in Nevada, uh, Utah, Arizona, and California. You're used to it, okay? But it ain't letting up anytime soon, okay? And you also notice this storm down here, uh, possibly a hurricane or cyclone, whatever you want to call it, south of the Baja, California region, and that might actually form into a named storm and impact the western areas of the Baja, California uh, area there. But unfortunately, this isn't going to send any moisture into uh, the New Mexico uh, or California area or anything like that. So really nothing much to talk about there. So here we are all the way on Sunday. OK, we're, we're on September 12th now. This is six days away. And as you can see, the, the pattern is normalizing across the entire United States. Our line, there, there are no big bulges or dips in our lines. We're going to have normal temperatures out here through much of the United States, maybe some scattered rain showers up here in the Northeast. And look at this. You see that right there? that blue line. Woo, it's been a while since we've seen that much of the 540 line and the 534 line on these videos. Uh, <laughs> anything north of that could be snow. That's right. We're talking about snow again on the channel. I can't wait until I can finally say it. Uh, that we're going to be in Snowtown, baby. The OG <laughs> members of this channel will know what I'm talking about there. Uh, but uh, we are actually looking at possibly uh, some snow moving into portions of Manitoba, all the way into Ontario and Quebec. And you'll see that these low pressure systems are getting 
stronger up here in Canada as they are racing down that boundary. Remember, I talked about that fall battle zone where we have warm air fighting against cold air. That's going to make these lows really start to spin up and bring down some more cold air. And that's really what, you know, fall is all about. And we also have a storm forming down here in the Gulf of Mexico. Okay, this is, I really want to uh, talk about this for a second because this could end up being, you know, our next tropical system. Okay, the GFS has been hinting about a tropical storm or a hurricane forming for the past couple of runs. And, you know, it's either taken it into Texas, Louisiana, or it's just kind of kept it down here and, and fizzled away with it as it moves into Mexico. And that's kind of what we're seeing here. Look at this. It gets all the way down to a 989 millibar low pressure system on a September 15th around 2 p.m. And once again, we could be talking about a named storm here, possibly a hurricane uh, that's uh, right there uh, getting ready to affect the southeastern portions of uh, Texas. Uh, but this model actually just keeps it rotating. It gets it down to a 973 millibar, 968, and then it makes landfall there pretty much in the exact same spot as Major Hurricane Grace did earlier in the year. So remember, this is September 18th that we're looking at here. So this is going to change significantly. And that's one of the reasons why I I'm kind of concerned about it. Okay. The fact that we're showing a storm here consistently in the Gulf is not a good sign because the more than likely we are going to get some sort of development out here. And it's very unlikely that the GF is already completely right with its track this far out. So I, I don't think that we're going to see a landfall here in, in, in Mexico, although it is possible. The rest of the Gulf Coast here needs to stay alert because this thing could definitely go in any direction here and make landfall uh, anywhere in Texas, Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, or Florida. Or hopefully... It never forms at all. <laughs> all right. That's what we are really hoping for here uh, because this is that time of the year, man, where the Gulf of Mexico is so warm. If anything gets out there and starts, you know, uh, you know, becoming organized, it becomes a concern and it can end up being a situation where we have another major hurricane out here. And that is not what we want to see. So at the same time, that tropical system is spinning up. We have another big low pressure system coming through here, spawning a cold front down into the Ohio Valley. Once again, with another big cold air mass behind it. This time we got actual snow uh, that might try to make it into the, uh, the Minnesota area. Uh, you can see that uh, 540 line. It might try to make it into the upper peninsula of Michigan. Might see a few snowflakes out there, but who knows? The The main thing is, is it's definitely going to be getting cooler over here in the Northeast as we go into the future. And then just look at all that snow up here, man. <laughs> Tons of cold air and snow and eye candy up there as we continue to see storm systems just move across the U.S. And eventually one of these low pressure systems is going to dig down a big enough trough and a cold front to cool off the West Coast. And that's when we'll starting to see our real transition into fall here in the United States. Speaking of cold air, let's take a look at those temperature anomalies. Let's show you uh, the difference in temperature compared to normal as we go into the future. Here we are on Wednesday, September 8th at 2 p.m. We're going to be much below average here in much of the uh, you know Great Lakes region, Ohio Valley and Midwest as that big cold front has moved in and knocked down our temperatures in some places, maybe you know 10 to 20 degrees below normal, especially here along the Appalachian Mountains as some of that, as some of that cold air becomes dammed up. Uh, as that uh, cold front sweeps through. It's going to be a nice cool off for a lot of the East Coast, and it's going to be hanging around for a little while, but there's going to be instances where some of this warm air is going to try to come up into Canada and, uh, you know, compete with those big low pressure systems, but they're saying no, okay, as they bring down more cold fronts behind them. You're going to see this happen often. You're going to see a, uh, this is the time of year where it's really hot and above average one day, and the next day it rains, and then it's cold outside. You've seen it happen before, and this is why it happens, okay? It's that fall battle zone. Uh, the warm air is fighting with the cold air, the Earth's axis is tilting and uh, the cold air has an advantage and uh, we start to see those cold fronts start to slam through. And it does look like as we go later on, much later on, the uh, West Coast is gonna try to cool off here, possibly around uh, Tuesday, September 21st, as a massive bowling ball cold front comes down through and hopefully cools off uh, the West Coast all the way down into Arizona and California as well. And that's pretty much the weather story for you today, guys. Guys, thank you so much for being here. Uh, we are 83,000 subscribers or something like that. If you haven't done it already, go ahead and slap that like button, subscribe, and turn those notifications on so you never miss a video or a live stream. Additionally, I'm super pumped about our members only live stream this evening. We've got a ton of members now. I hope to see all of you there. But if you can't actually be there for the live stream, don't worry, it'll be recorded and you'll be able to watch it as, at a later date. All right, it's been fun talking with you. I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye. Ooh.